This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 3321. This is show number 217. Well, markets are down yesterday, Nick. What's going to happen today? Well, actually, yesterday we, we did sell off. So the markets did uh, did falter yesterday. They came in and it was a, wasn't a huge decline, but it was it was pretty decent. Today we have a mixed tape out here. We are looking at uh, the major indexes a bit on the weaker side. Really, um, you're looking at the NASDAQ again on the weaker side. I should say that. The, uh, the S&P is also down about a quarter of 1%, but the NASDAQ's down uh, three quarters of 1%, and the NASDAQ 100 is down nearly 1%. So that's definitely where the weakness lies today. Then we have the Russell uh, 2000 up about six tenths of 1%, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which I said yesterday was not a positive when the Dow is leading, that's up another three-tenths of 1% today. So we're seeing a little bit of a mixed tape here. We're getting a little bit of a bounce just due to time of day. And um, you know we'll see where these markets ultimately go. Uh, the decline today, it was funny because in the pre-market, the markets were up pretty big. And then um, right before the open, the market sold off and um, yields started to move up on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note. So that's what the financial media is telling us that you know, as yields move up, we move lower. But as we speak, bond yields now are up about six basis points, trading at 1.479%. But you are having a higher Dow, and you are seeing the Russell 2000 both in the green. Right. So they they tell us, you know, it's bad when yields go up, but banks make more money when the yields go up because they're getting money on the yield spread. So it's not bad for everybody, is it? Yeah, when you get a steeper yield curve, the financial stocks will benefit. And they're the one industry group that's doing really well today. So you have JP Morgan up nearly 3%. Bank of America is up 3.6%. Goldman Sachs up 2.2%. Morgan Stanley up 2%. And then you have Wells Fargo up 3.4%. So yeah, the, the, the financial stocks are definitely the beneficiaries. Now, there's one caveat to the financial stocks. They're parabolic now, or they're almost parabolic. So they're very stretched, very extended. Um, that's where you got to be careful with the financials here jumping on board because they're up a ton already and they are entering that parabolic uh, zone. And you know what happens when everything goes parabolic. It eventually comes down uh, except, uh, very except, sharply. Except Bitcoin, of course, right? Well, Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin's had some <laughs> – Bitcoin's that went – you know, it never fully went parabolic, but even when it made that move, uh, up on the 22nd, you got to remember that went as high as uh, 58,600. And, you know, just recently, four days ago, we went down to 44,500. So, you know, just that's that was a big, big uh, whips. Yeah, big whips for sure. Hey, so so they've been after gold. They nailed it yesterday. It turned around, amazingly enough, down slightly. And uh, again, today it was down 20 something dollars the ounce on the spot. And that's kind of turned around a little bit anyway. It's only down 16 on the spot. What's your take? What's going on here? Yeah, I, I like gold here. So, you know, we've talked about these levels uh, being in play. I thought GDX, which is gold miners ETF, would get down to 31 or even a slight bit lower. I thought that uh, gold futures. Um, would head down to the low 1700 level. That has happened. So this is this is where I think you know traders. If if you gutsy, this is where you got to get into gold. I don't know what the catalyst to the story is going to be or what's going to what's going to amplify it higher. But I do believe that uh, we, I do believe that we will see uh, the gold market catch a bit here. All right, and uh, and that will be interesting to see for sure. Because it's been so moribund since it hit its high back on August the 7th, I think it was, all-time high. It's kind of uh, been, you know, mildly bearish, down. I mean, that's quite a while for it to be doing a consolidation, right? I mean, that's a pretty long consolidation. 
you know. it is but you, you have to remember um the reason why i was so patient with it is because you have to consolidate on that larger time frame so yeah when you look at a daily chart you say wow we're down for you know seven eight months now but the reality of it is that's nothing when you're looking at say uh uh, a, a monthly or even a quarterly chart that's just a blip you know you went parabolic you had to put in that sideways action i gotta say i love the movement the pullback that gold has had i love it i think it's exactly what i was looking for it's exactly what the doctor ordered um this is this is what you want to see if you're bullish gold you want to see this kind of pullback you want to see people forget about it that it's that it's an asset class not only bitcoin could be an asset class but guess what gold and silver could be an asset class too yeah. So I, I love this. This is exactly what I was looking for. Um, picture perfect. And, you know, we'll see how it reacts now. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, my money's on you, Nick, because you called. <laughs> you totally called this. And everyone was naysaying, no, nah, it can't happen. It can't happen. But what's interesting is that even at the 1700 rate, I know the gold miners have gotten slammed. You know, they've come down. But really, at seventeen hundred plus dollar gold, all these mines are still economically feasible, and if gold goes back up, those stocks are going to do really well. Yeah, and and the other thing that people aren't looking at right now, which I think is, is the fear factor, right? We haven't had gold go up for fear because the, they were fearful of the market. Right now, gold has been um, almost mistreated. It, it went and went parabolic. It had a great move in, in August of 2020 from the March lows. It was just absolutely sensational. Um, but the reality of it is, you know, people are out there and they think that, um, you know, everything is rosy out in the stock market because the Fed is just printing gazillions and gazillions of dollars. But this is problematic. And I think gold will have its day in the sun now because people will start to say, hey, you know what? Um, they're they're not going to really let off the gas, or they got problems. And you know what? I want to have something tangible. I don't want to own something um, that's you know maybe a cryptocurrency, which people have been flocking to. You have all these celebrities lately getting into cryptocurrencies. Many of these athletes now want to get paid in cryptocurrencies. Um, I don't own a cryptocurrency, and I don't even want to own it. But I'll tell you what: I feel good about having a a nice ten ounce bar of of silver on my desk, or you know, a, a gold coin. Um, and I think that's going to be the story that takes over. We'll see. I'm never good at the catalyst. I'm never good at the stories. But the chart right now says this is where you want to own gold. All right. And, uh, hey, cryptos, like, I wouldn't put all my money into them like so many of you out there have done. But having a percentage in there is probably not such a bad thing. But be careful at the price. You know, the one thing about cryptos, though, they're really kind of easy to chart, aren't they, Nick, at this point? Well, the charts have gotten better because now we have data. So for me, we, you know, as long as we have a, a, some time period of data, meaning, you know, a couple of years, it, it becomes a lot easier. Right now, I have good, good data on cryptos, you know, going back to around 2018. Um, before that, you know, nobody really has data, but that's when it did come on to the futures. So I have that data available for me. And and I'm not saying the crypto trend isn't up right now. It is still up, and it can still go higher. There's nothing technically wrong. But if you start to break through the 45,000 level that we just uh, recently uh, reached on the downside, uh, then then these things are probably, in my opinion, go down to around 35,000, uh, and that's where you'll find your next big support level. But you know, again, it, everything can be charted and. Um, you know that that's really the nice thing. It's just an asset class that I wouldn't look at it at anything other than that. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of money to be made in asset classes. That's right. Uh, the whole currency thing is entirely premature. Maybe one day we will have all these competing currencies, and you'll have a credit card, and you'll just pick which one you want to charge it in. But for right now, that reality is not here, and till it is. It's not a currency because currency implies a medium of exchange. It might be a store of value. It appears to be. Uh, you know, you have your factors of money. Portability is good. Visibility is good. But uh, it's not accepted. It's not legal tender yet. And therefore, its future is uncertain. Doesn't mean it's not going to continue to go up higher and have these parabolic moves. 
that seems to be the history of Bitcoin. There, you no, know? it does. And and my biggest fear is, what do you do if a government outlaws it or bans it? I mean, do do people not think that that can happen? Hey, China is in the midst of doing it now, right? Yeah, you have China, you have India, you have a lot of different, and these are big nations. I mean, think about it. China has one point five billion people, roughly. India has 1.1, 1.2 billion people. That's, you know, you're talking about two thirds of the Earth's population. So, you know, I, I just don't understand how people don't understand that risk. But, you know, right now, the, the uh, central bankers, they're all talking about going towards their own digital currency. And believe me, they don't want anybody competing with them if we've learned anything over the years. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Well, we'll leave it at that. Go over to inthemoneystocks.com. Take a look at Nick's trading record and uh, think about subscribing. The Twitter feeds at ITMS, at Nick Santiago01, at Kerry Lutz. Send us your emails to kl at kerrylutz.com. Nick, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good, Kerry. And so concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. Be sure to go to his website, InTheMoneyStocks.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds, at ITMS and at NickSantiago01.